of a Thomas. We are a commercial office furniture dealer located here in Kansas City, Omaha, and Wichita. Um, I hope that you arrived to me today because you've either never integrated furniture into a project before or you found the process to be frustrating. Um, I know that in the process of construction, uh, we usually are coming in right at the very last minute. Um, just when everybody thinks they have a clean job site, and then we make a big mess and get everybody all frustrated again. So hopefully we can um, shed some light on that today, um, make some things easier for you, give you some ideas about how you should work with contract for your dealers to make your projects a little bit easier to handle. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to go through sort of why our industry exists, how it's different than how you buy furniture in the residential markets. Um, tell you a little bit about what a firm like mine does and should do on your projects. Um, just talk a little bit about um, expertise and what value adds we bring to a project. Um, some helpful do's and don'ts with some funny pictures. Um, and then a couple projects that we believe are some successful outcomes and just so we can show you some um, pretty pictures of work that we've done. And then happy to answer questions. Um, since we are a small group here this afternoon or this morning, um, feel free to stop me at any time. We can have a conversation about it. Um, so, contract furniture is different than anything that you might buy from West Elm or Pottery Barn. Um, it is not sitting in a warehouse somewhere waiting to be shipped to you. All of it is made to work. Um, most of the manufacturers are based in West, Mis West Michigan um, and are distributed similar to the auto industry. So, uh, local dealers partner with big manufacturers and um, sort of do that as similar to like Ford or Chevy or anything like that. Um, Encompass specifically is aligned with a brand called Hayward, located in Holland, Michigan, similar to Steelcase, Miller Null, all the big brands you've heard of before, I'm sure. Um, the way that the industry was started in, West, in Michigan um, was just as a result of the um, sort of office market coming out of World War II and wanting to um, start to add partitions and power into office spaces. So there were items like this that were just intended to divide space, integrate electricity, um, and then start to sort of um, integrate computers and technology at the um, big point of the century there. Um, and it got like this in the 80s. It was really ugly. Everyone hated this. Um, but it was the uh, product of this little guy right here having to sit in the corner. Um, and everybody needed one of those to do what they needed to do. And then we separated their little cute farms. Um, and what we learned from this application, um, just moving into the future. Uh, by the early 2000s, we were able to kind of make fun of it. Um, so all the politics and personalities that go along with pictures on the left, and just all that sort of ridiculousness that happens in office spaces as we sort of learn how people um, you know, behave with one another. And then at the dot-com boom, it looked, started to look like a picture on the right where no one cared about any of this stuff. They just needed to cram bodies into spaces because there was so much technology and innovation happening. What's going on now? I'm purposefully leaving out the gap between the pandemic where everyone was working at their dining room table um, because that is not something that we ever endorse. It's not healthy for organizations, it's not healthy for individuals uh, to be working out of their houses in non um, ergonomic spaces. We recognize that um, it is necessary as a part of the world now, um, but we hope that we are seeing the pendulum swing back towards people being in the office, um, back in you know, places where they're um, present in their space and connecting with one another. So these are just a couple of projects that we've done here recently where um, we're trying to bring humanity back to the office, make it a destination um, place where people see it as um, worth the commute, as support in terms of um, being able to connect with others. Um, this is Hill's Pet Nutrition on the left where they can bring their animals in to work with them um, and to really just make it a Rebecca, an inviting space where there is um, an asset available to um, this is specific to um, sort of office work. Um, this applies to you know municipalities, um, universities, anything where um, the way that people use this used to be very critical. So it was one place from nine to five. Um, at least it shifted uh, prior to pandemic to people kind of started working from third spaces. You see, you saw a lot of office workers um, kind of touching down in Starbucks and working from all these they have laptops. And now it's just chaos over here on the right. Now. People are working everywhere, they're working all, you know, all hours of the day. So we're trying to kind of quiet a little bit of that chaos just to uh, bring some order back to um, you know, facilities and office spaces and the way that people work to allow them to do what's best for them. And then this is what we're finding that people want these days. Um, they want inviting places where they can get together um, with coworkers to collaborate or compete. Um, people are sort of 
kind of tired of sitting on Teams calls with person, someone in the next room. So if we are going to be together, we're going to be in the same room, uh, make it intentional. Um, they also need private spaces. Once everyone came back from the pandemic, they realized how annoying other people are and how, talk, how loud they talk. Um, so we're getting a lot of complaints these days about, oh, can you put a roof on my workstation? Can you make it so that it's possible so I don't hear anyone? Um, and that's not really feasible, but there are ways that we can create third spaces within a floor plate um, to make uh, private spaces for people to either meet or take phone calls. Um, they want everything to be adaptable. Um, so for the first time in my life a couple years ago, I sold a walk holy cart. Um, so when people are coming back to the office, they're trying to integrate hospitality. Um, they want it to be adaptable so they can do private work, have meetings, and then sometimes rest, recuperate, um, have team meetings with one another, and and then obviously the, the uh, space itself becomes a, a tool for social use. Um, so we are building community, bringing everyone back together, sort of reimagining what, what organizations look like. Um, the office or the place is the tool to rebuild that community. So what's the role of Encompass or any other furniture dealer that you might work with? Um, it is our hope that we can serve as an extension of your design build team. So, um, hiring us on our qualifications at the beginning um, so that we can work along with your architecture firm, your design build team um, to set budgeting in the very beginning so that we understand what the expectations are, what your pro programming needs are, um, and, and really build a budget with you rather than arriving to the project at the end and having something sort of fully baked that then you're sort of sticker shocked by the amount of, like, amount of money that's still cost. Um, in doing that, we can assist with programming and space planning. So if you give drawings to someone like us, we can put them into our software and draw all of the um, furniture and equipment that goes into a space right along with your architect. Um, what's probably most important in things that we're hearing from clients today, just making sure that technology is integrated smartly. Um, as everyone has you know, increased the amount of team calls that they're taking and rooms that they need to do meetings in, um, technology has to work. People don't want to be frustrated by that because that's the, the purpose why they're coming back into the office these days is to have meetings. Um, so televisions, power and data and tables, um, sort of mobile technology, all of that really has to be integrated from the beginning. We have to um, coordinate with your electrical engineers to make sure all of that is in the right place and that it's priced correctly so that we don't have change orders at the end of the job. Um, so really just being there at the beginning of a project is really important for us so that we can um, lend that service to you make sure that everything is budgeted correctly. And then just as it does bolts, um, because we manufacture and ship on time for projects, we manage a lot of that delivery and we manage all of that delivery and installation. So as something is coming off the production line, it's loaded directly onto trucks, shipped here in Kansas City or uh, you know, from wherever it's being manufactured. And we sort of keep track of all of that and make sure that it's arriving to the job site on time when it's appropriate to be delivered and that um, you know the job site is ready for it, which just wants that. Um, so in the planning phases, we want to just help define scope. How many workstations do we need? What does the break room look like? How many conference tables do we need? What's the technology basis for those? Um, so this is sort of just some examples of how we do that. These are three red rings over here on the top to show um, as we're working through what those things might function like and look like. And we provide you some visual tools to help you understand what you're going to be purchasing down the line. Okay. Space planning tools are these here on the bottom, just to show um, rather than just generic furniture blocks, how do we get smart about um, what we draw and what we're putting in documents so that that power and data is coordinated correctly. And then just making sure that we're getting all of the, the needs of the end users accomplished in the defining of scope. Then we want to, um, once we get further down the line, just to sort of show you what you're going to be buying. Um, that there's a sort of endless amount of choices out there when it comes to task seating, workstations, conference furniture, ancillary, all that stuff. And I think there's still um, a little bit of sort of um, a veil around some, some furniture about what, what exactly are we getting, why does this stuff cost so much. So um, we produce specifications like this sometimes for um, government projects and then really show um, by complete specifications so that you know exactly what you're getting and, and what we're pricing. And then the all-important coordination. As I said, uh, power and data is king when it comes to all of this, making sure that engineers have scope uh, captured correctly in their documents, um, that we have made informed choices about what that looks like. Um, sometimes that you know, recommendation is you know, put 
put a power box underneath every workstation, or you're going to collect or connect groups of workstations via via a whip. You have to know how many circuits go to all of that, um, what sorts of um, equipment and machines are going to be used inside of workstations or conference rooms, so that we can make sure we've got all that smooth captured correctly. And then, as you see here, um, just making sure that conference rooms and technology are functioning for the, the ways that people want to use them, and they are frustrated coming into rooms and not being able to get. Um, and ultimately just making sure that you don't have change orders at the end of the job. We look at Gantt just like everybody else does. <laughs> Thank you. 
go through the production process and have put on a truck and ship somewhere. If the site isn't ready, that's when we sort of run into problems. Um, we have to either put things into storage or uh, put them into job sites that aren't ready and that doesn't serve people. So just making sure that we're uh, constantly checking in on the, on the schedule part of it so that we don't end up with you know, crates of storage uh, taking up space on the job site. And then what does site readiness look like? So there's a lot of times when we're just burning towards the end of a project uh, and the, the, the deadline is there and we're going to meet it no matter what. And people end up stuffing us into job sites that aren't ready. And all that does is create more issues. Um, we get in everyone's way and it just creates more frustration. Um, so conversations sort of when we're at this point in a job to say furniture isn't ready can we use contingency to make sure that we're not putting furniture into spaces like this and getting in the way of the plumber, the electrician, the carpet guy, you know, whoever it may be. Because um, we don't want to make that mistake because it ends up just um, prolonging the process and potentially delaying things even further if other trades can't finish their work as we're in the way. And sometimes this looks like this. So we can go through um, a job you know, several weeks or months before a furniture is scheduled to start and sort of make an assessment of what spaces are ready and what spaces aren't and actually do some documentation to help you with that to say that we can concentrate everything to maybe this quarter of the building, we can start working phases, we're just going to work with you to determine what that looks like. I'm sure no one in this room has ever experienced the on ever going punch list to the punch list forever. Um, we have that tendency to, to um, have that happen to us where We'll come through with the architect and designer, punch it one time, and then we'll keep getting consecutive lists for weeks and weeks after that. The, um, what we would like to ask, and obviously coordinate with clients, is to make sure that we're doing punch lists one time at the right time and get all those issues sort of taken, taken care of all at once so that it doesn't feel like the end of the project is sort of dribbling on forever. And I'm sure you experience that too when it comes to uh, architecture. So here's just a couple of projects um, that we see as huge wins um, in the sort of history of our organization. Um, the first one is the headquarters for the Dairy Farmers of America. It's out near the Legends. Um, DFA hired us um, after an RFP process for the workstations and then ended up awarding us all the ancillary furniture and movable walls for the job. So it ended up being sort of a truly modular interior where the space was completely finished. Um, all they had was electrical connections and um, you know, finished ceiling and, and finished floor by the time we came in. And then we started just implementing by floors, four floors, with the workstations and ancillary. Um, that if they gave, they gave us a blank box, everything had been um, coordinated appropriately up that time as far as where all the electrical connections had to be made, movable walls installed. And then they just sort of just turned the job over to us for the last month and a half, two months, uh, to get all this stuff installed. As you can see, a beautiful project that very much uh, changed the organization. They actually used to be in a building up here, uh, that sort of big, dark, black building on your way to the airport, where they were um, segmented into multiple floors across the floor plate, and people weren't communicating. All their executives were in private offices, and they felt very segmented, um, and that their corporate culture wasn't really working. Um, so to bring them into a space like this where they're um, former partners now can come visit this space and collaborate. Their employees are much happier and more taken care of. Um, we really saw this one as a big one. This was with HOK and Jada. Uh, uh, and then just here recently, um, the T-Mobile campus is the new sort of headquarters for Hills Pet Nutrition. They moved a lot of their office operations from Topeka. And again, uh, movable walls were stations, ancillary furniture. Um, turn the entire space over to us for implementation. Um, they did have uh, a more phased approach on this one because they were completing construction by floor. So they would complete a floor, turn it over to us, and complete a floor and do it again. We sort of phased out all the deliveries to make sure that we could integrate in that way. Um, but as I said earlier, um, you know, integrating a company's brand and their culture um, can happen not only through the architecture but furniture. Um, so this sort of Latin room here is a freestanding post and beam system that we can put down into a space to create a conference room um, that then becomes a furniture asset rather than build construction. Um, game rooms are, have been all the rage for quite some time and getting people a place to um, rest and relax during the workday and then just all the ancillary furniture that people want these days in order to get away.
away from their workstations, um, take a break, sort of um, get the legs 